Hello there students and welcome. We'll get started on lecture shortly. Uh, today's lecture will be pharmacy and healthcare. This is going to be part one of as you're done with uh, this video, go ahead and go on to part two of pharmacy and uh, learning objectives for today. So we'll go through a brief history of pharmacy, ancient time through today. Uh, talk a little bit about usage in computers and the economic impact. Origins of medicine. So before the scientific method, um, people believe that illness were caused from spirits, the gods, or demons. And the only way to get healed is to appease these gods or demons. So those that can communicate with the spirit world were usually also the physicians. Of course, that gave away or gave way to the scientific method. And one of the first persons to use a similar approach was Hippocrates. What he did was he used careful observation and controls. So pretty much he looked at uh, one symptom at a time and try to use one treatment at a time and document his findings. The origins of medicine. So the three basic uh, origins of medicine, plants, animals, and minerals. So we have two living and one non-living. And in the ancient Sumerians, that's uh, nowadays the Iraq area, the first civilization on Earth, about 250 plant-derived medications. And then to China, about 365 herbs were used. So the uh, understanding, man's understanding of plants and medicine has increased over time. Nowadays, we can synthesize our drugs. That means we can use chemical processes to uh, make the compounds uh, we're looking for. Uh, three plant-based origins, three examples of plant-based origins for medication. So we have the uh, chincona, so it's the bark of the tree, and derived from that was quinine. And if you're familiar with uh, tonic water, it contains quinine, gives it that uh, bitter taste, and that is to prevent malaria. Coca. Uh, extracted from that is, of course, cocaine, and it was the first uh, effective local anesthetic. So previous to that, uh, they would have had to give you some general anesthesia, probably in the form of ether or chloroform. The white willow, uh, we were able to extract salicylic acid. Today we compound or we uh, synthesize acetylsalicylic acid, which is ASA abbreviated ASA, and better known as aspirin. Review questions. What did Hippocrates use as the basis for diagnosing illnesses? If you said careful observation, you would be correct. What were the sources of medicine in ancient times? So there are three sources. They happen to be plants, animals, and minerals. So if you got that one, very Match the plant and the medication derived from that plant. So chincona, that of course is quinine, the source of quinine. Coca, give rise, or we extract cocaine from that. And white willow, salicylic acid. Nope, just, yeah, salicylic acid, of course, uh, the salicylic acid we use is acetylsalicylic acid, which is ASA aspirin. Match the medicine and its use or purpose. Salicylic acid is for pain relief. So the term for pain relief is analgesic. So we have ana without and algia pain. Quinine, prevention of malaria and cocaine, a good local anesthetic. Medicine through the ages. So 400 BCE. So BCE is before the current era. So in that first human civilization settlement, they used about 250,000 years later on uh, China, 365. So don't get bogged down with the specific dates and numbers. Just know that 
they continually increase. So here in uh, Egypt, the Egyptian area, they have the Papyrus Ebers, which is a collection of works, 700 plants-based drugs listed there. And then almost 2,000 years after that, we had, or sorry, almost 1,100 years after that, we have Hippocrates. And of course, his care for observation leading to the scientific method. I uh, won't go through uh, all of these points, just a few uh, important ones. Let's continue on with uh, Gallen. Gallen believed that for health, you have to balance four humors. Humors are just liquids in the body. For example, one of the humors was blood or is blood. And if you had too much blood, that would cause a fever. And what they believed or how they believed to reduce that fever is to, well, reduce some blood. Trypanation, bloodletting. Uh, Percy Rasmus, uh, alchemist, so in the middle of the word, you can see what they're trying to do, chemistry. Uh, these um, alchemists were trying to convert regular everyday um, metal into gold. And of course they had to do this in secrecy uh, because if you were able to turn ordinary metals into gold, you'd have a lot of power. And the king, or whoever was ruling, wouldn't want you to have that power. So they um, weren't successful. Of course, gold is a pure element. But what they were able to do was to kind of categorize all their failures into a crude periodic table. Let's take a look in Mexico. So 1500 current era, about 1200 drugs now. Paracelsus, he rejected Galen's humoral philosophy, and since the chemistry information was there through the alchemists, he, um, he suggested that we try to synthesize or create our own compounds and use them as medications. Let's take a look in China now. We're up to 2,000 drugs. Uh, smallpox vaccine? Well, using uh, good observation, a similar strategy for preventing or a vaccine for smallpox was used in China. Uh, what they found was those who were infected with cowpox, the survival rate was a lot better than smallpox. And if they had cowpox and survived, they would never get smallpox. So what they did was they dried up the lesions on people with cowpox. Uh, pulverize them and had uh, patients uh, snort them to expose them to the antigen. So similar family, you get cowpox, you survive, but you never got smallpox. See general anesthesia. So general anesthesia, you're going to go unconscious. So they use ether. So very crudely, um, just have you inhale it. And if they gave you too much, you didn't wake up. And if they didn't give you enough, you woke up during surgery. Louis Pasteur and the germ theory. So he had to prove, or his postulation was that there was germs everywhere and that life had to be come from life. So he did a little elegant um, experiment with uh, food broth. So he had this funny uh, flask the neck of it, the opening of it, it is open to the air, but it didn't have a direct path, and inside was food, food for any bacteria. And what happened is anything that was in the air would settle in the neck, and his broth would stay clean and not turbulent. All he had to do was to prove that there were germs in the air was to tip, get some of this fluid, and some of that settled particles, and lo and behold, things would grow. So before that, they believed that life was spontaneous. 1888, cocaine, first good local anesthetic. So a lot safer now to have surgery. We can just uh, anesthetize that area instead of using general anesthesia. We have aspirin developed right at the turn of the century. Fleming. 
Alexander Fleming discovered penicillin. Well, accidentally, he was trying to grow out bacteria, but his plate was infected or contaminated with mold. And what he found was in between the mold and the bacteria, there was no growth. He was wondering what was happening, and he found out that it was the mold producing penicillin, releasing penicillin to the environment, and preventing uh, bacteria from growing. So it's just chemical warfare in the microbial world. But of course today we have our emergence of superbugs. So these bacteria launched a counterattack, and their compound of choice, penicillinase, an enzyme that breaks down penicillin. Uh, DNA. So Watson and Crick, uh, they were able to find the structure. Of course, that's the double helix structure. So we know now that DNA is the hardware. It's the software that determines what genes are turned on and off and when. Amgen produces epigen. So epigen is erythropoietin. And what that is is a hormone that normally your kidney releases, and that stimulates red blood cell production. And of course, red blood cells, RBCs, they're able to carry oxygen. So if you're going through cancer therapy, you may have a low blood cell count, uh, anemia. So they'll give you epigen to increase your red blood cell count. Nowadays, a lot of athletes have abused uh, epigen instead of training at altitude. Review question. Man's understanding and use of plants as medicine has what over the centuries? And the theme of today's lecture, of course, is increase. And we're still learning. Uh, we just broke the code of DNA. Now we're trying to break how to read it. What's another name for acetylsalicylic acid? If you said aspirin or ASA, you'd be correct. So what's the abbreviation for Tylenol? So the abbreviation for Tylenol is very similar. That's going to be APAP. -A so try not to um, get them interposed. All right. uh, that looks like that is the end of part one. And coming up next will be the conclusion of pharmacy and healthcare. So thank you guys for joining me. And um, I'll see you again soon. If not here, then in class. Thank you.